So we're here in my laboratory at the University of Louisville to do a few experiments with heat. And in front of you there's the ballots that you've seen before in the other labs and some devices to measure temperature that you're somewhat familiar with. I'm sure there's a thermometer, which is a mercury-based thermometer that depends on the expansion of a small volume of mercury and a little capillary down inside. That expansion's graduated in degrees Celsius across the scale here. Um, there's a, a thermocouple which has an electronic um, sensor here that's based on the Seebeck effect. Uh, generates a voltage between two dissimilar metals and then that voltage is measured and interpreted as temperature. I have it displaying in degrees Fahrenheit right now. So we can measure the temperature of anything with the end of that probe and right now it says the room temperature is 75.1. may not be exactly right, but relatively when that changes it's a representation of the change in the temperature, which is what we're looking for. And then we have a thermal sensor which looks at the black body radiation from an object and it will measure the temperature by looking at the actual light that that object emits in the infrared. So it says that the temperature of that stand is 72 Fahrenheit right now. Those two temperatures don't agree, but as I say, when one changes, the other will change and they'll stay uh, parallel to one another. It's just a little offset in the two measurements. So now we're going to try to measure the thermal properties of a piece of brass and a clamped a um, brass rod in the end of this drill a little piece of paper actually it's a piece of cardboard in here to keep the thermal contact from the brass and the drill to kind of minimize that so that if we put energy into the brass it should stay mostly here it's going to be a little bit of loss at that joint right there i'm going to be able to spin this using the drill because when i turn it on it's going to run and rotate it 550 revolutions per minute. And then we're going to, on the outside of this, we're going to rub on the outside of that with a metal strap. And I have a strap here which uh, will rest on the outside of that brass. I'm going to wrap it on there one time. So it'll make pretty good contact to the end of the brass. And then as this rotates, the force of the friction on this metal strap as it is exerted on the brass will do work and that work will heat up the brass and we're going to look at how much it heats up. I've got a thermocouple set up. So this uh, thermocouple is reading the temperature in Celsius at the tip end of that thermocouple and there's a hole in the end of the brass here so we can measure the temperature. Let's start out by trying that measurement right now. I'm just going to stick this down in here and we'll see what we get. I would say that's about 26.9 Celsius after it comes to equilibrium here. That I'm stuck in there. It's going to cool off while it sits. Now we're going to wrap this strap on here. I'm going to put an extra turn on it if I can. Like that. Bottom of the strap has a uh, one kilogram mass on it that's pulling downward. 
And then we're just going to start it up and let it run here. change the temperature of the grass with. So the brass got hot, as we'd expect, from the friction. I can actually feel the temperature difference a little bit. So we had the metal strap wrapped on the outside. At the bottom of this metal strap, there's this one kilogram mass, which is pulling down on it. And it's the friction of that strap on the surface, which is determined by the mass, by the force of gravity on the mass, that caused that to heat up. This is rotated at 550 turns per second. So we'll take that data and see what it tells us about the thermal properties of the brass. Now we're going to do a few things with water as well. I've got a couple of styrofoam cups here. This one is uh, water which was just boiling just uh, a minute or two ago and I took it out of the pot. And let's see what we've got when we measure its temperature. It'll cool off a little bit. But if it were boiling, it would be 100 Celsius. It's 95.2 or 3, according to the meter. And see, slowly cooling down. It sits there in the styrofoam cup. And this is tap water, just poured. to what I would say would be room temperature here today. And then I went up to our freezer a few minutes ago and brought down some ice. This is a tray right out of the freezer. It has not started to melt. There's no water here yet. And uh, let's see what we've got for it. We can get a measurement. It would be possible to get good thermal contact. It's coming up a little high, so let's, uh, let's do something with that. Maybe we can open that up a little bit. I've also got some ice, which I froze inside a baggie. I should put 150 milliliters of water in here and then just froze that. So we actually have 50 milliliters of solid water here. And it's uh, probably just beginning to melt but it may still be a little colder than zero Celsius. Let me see if I can get a temperature on that. No, not quite. I can't quite get into it. I could feel a little bit of water around it. Probably not perfect thermal contact. It should be zero if it's at freezing right now, just beginning to 
to melt. So what we can do with these things is mix different uh, amounts of water and see how they come to equilibrium. And I can put the ice in water and see what temperature it comes to when the ice has melted. So that might be an interesting experiment to try. So let's take, while well, the ice is sitting there just doing its thing, let me take 50 milliliters of just plain water. Pretty close to 50 there. And uh, I'm going to put it on the scale here in a minute. So we'll get this out of the way for a second. Let's put the styrofoam cup on the scale here. And measure the mass of that cup, it should be about 2 grams. It tends to get a little sticky at times. So it's right about two and a half grams right now in the cup. I'll just pour the water in. 50 milliliters of water measured with this graduate. So it should be pretty close to 50 cubic centimeters. And we'll measure the mass up over here at the 50 slot. Comes up a little short. Not by much. Let's see how much. Fifty one and a half now, so it's about a milliliter short uh, of being uh, 50 cubic centimeters of water. Since the density of water is one gram per cc, we can measure the temperature of that water again, um, same way we did here. Let me just hold this over here so you can see it. I'll just put the probe down in there and get a temperature measurement the best we can. 20. 2.5 Celsius. Here's some um, very hot water. So, I'm going to get my arm out of the way here. Don't to spill it. It's cooled off to 75.8 Celsius right now. I'm just going to pour some in. Let that mix while I measure how much we've got. I'm just going to add extra mass over here to see how much water I added on that end. It's 10, 20, 30, 40. 50 is too much. So 40, and then. Uh, So it now reads 92.8 grams on the scale. Let's see what temperature we've got now that we let those two waters mix. And we have 45.6 Celsius. Check that. I have a regular mercury thermometer here. We can stick that in there and see what it says. It's a little slower to come to equilibrium than the thermocouple, but it's coming up. It's. Uh, Measuring at 44 Celsius right now. So they're in reasonable agreement for two different devices. 
And I suspect that my infrared thermometer won't read exactly right. Just because it's all white down there. It reads 110.5 Fahrenheit. You can do the conversion on that. Okay, so um, now what I'd like to try is to put some of the ice in the hot water and we'll see what equilibrium temperature that comes to when the ice melts. But to do that, I think I'd really like to have hotter water than I have right now, so we'll pause for a moment. I'll go get some boiling water again and we'll try that. So I have the um, almost boiling water here. Put the thermometer in the... We'll see what we've got. So, 97.1 Fahrenheit, uh, 97.1 Celsius right now, 97.0, cooling off just a little bit, kind of slow. Just to see what we have here. It reads 187 at the highest point, that's the lower number in the bottom of that scale there on that thermometer. So I'm just put this same cup back on here. It'll be So now I have 140.6 grams cup and boiling water over here on the left. And I'm going to take my 50 milliliters, it was anyway when I froze it, of ice. It's got a little water in it, so I think the temperature of this, it really should be the temperature of melting ice, which would be, if it's pure, would be zero Celsius, but I'm having trouble. I don't think I can get good thermal contact with it. So it cannot be exactly right. It actually measures three, 2.2, 2 2.1, 1. So it's kind of coming down about one Celsius, pretty close to that. I'm just gonna put it in there. We'll see what happens. So now I've got ice and very hot water, and uh, of course it's out of balance. It should be 50, but no, maybe it's not. Maybe it's more than that. That's 10. Oh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Ah, good. So that's 40. And where it balances. And we'll see how much frozen water we put in there. All right. So it's 185.7 grams, or 185.7 milliliters. If you subtract, we've got to subtract the mass of the uh, styrofoam cup. So it's melting right now. As soon as it's melted, I'm going to measure the temperature. It's not all together melted yet. It's going to be shortly. Okay. The tiniest little bit of ice there. It's gone. Okay, so that's it right there. 43.3 Celsius just after that ice melted in this hot water that we had there before. It'd be an interesting challenge to see how that works out in terms of the properties of the ice when it is melted by the thermal energy that's stored in that hot water.
Now, I've got the piece of brass which we had done experiments on, and I have a cup here, which is empty. I'm going to pour some boiling water, just almost boiling water, over this brass. We're going to heat it up with the water. Let it sit there just for a minute or two. And then I, while that's heating up, I have another cup of water. This is room temperature water. I'm going to put it on the scale here. And uh, we can measure its mass so we know how much water we've got. Um, it, the styrofoam itself is two and a half grams. And then uh, we've got extra mass in the water that's 90. That's 100, 150, it's uh, 120, it's sticky. vein here that's supposed to keep it from oscillating and it's sticking just a bit. So. So we've got 128.3 oh, grams there. This is nice and steamy. Let's measure this temperature right now. That'll be the temperature of the brass. Measures 87 Celsius. And then I will grab that hot brass and put it in that water. Maybe before I do that, I should measure the temperature of this water again. See, this is the tap water that we had. Twenty-three point seven Celsius. Now we've got the brass immersed in the water pretty much all the way. Just nudge it over just a bit here. Now the thermal energy which was stored in that brass from this hot water has been delivered to the brass and water over here in this cup and that causes that water to get warmer. So uh, let's see what we've got here as that happens. Looks like we've got 26 Celsius. I don't know how I measure it, but let me see if I can get that. That's on the brass, if I actually measure 27. Down here in the water, depending on where I measure in the water, it's getting 24 and a half, so maybe we need to stir that up a little bit. Just do it this way. Give it a chance to come to a 
equilibrium. There's going to be a little loss of energy through the star foam and cooling off as a whole, but um, most of it is just internal. So it's like 25 Celsius. It's probably pretty good. Well, maybe 25, 5, 25, 6, 7. Okay. How about 25, 7? That's representative temperature now actually comes to equilibrium, something like that. So there's a problem and simple energy transfer using what we know about the properties of water and, uh, and grass. So the missing piece in the data that we have to be able to analyze the uh, thermal properties of these materials is what the mass of this brass rod is. It's a half inch diameter brass rod. It's about three inches long. We could calculate the mass from the known density of brass, but we can just put it on the scale too. So I'm just going to drop it on here. The scale's balanced out right now. It's obviously going to be out of balance. I'm going to drop it. And uh, we'll see if we can find what it takes to bring it down. That's 71.5 grams of brass in the tray. Now this is a standard electric tea kettle. It's got a heater in the base here. Um, so inside this, and we'll look at the inside after we're done, there's a coil which is resistive. And we apply electrical power to that coil uh, to develop heat, which uh, delivers energy to the water, raises its temperature. I've filled this kettle with one liter of water. And since I'd used it before for this experiment, it's a little warm inside. It's not at room temperature. So let's measure the temperature of that water with this reliable mercury thermometer and see what we get. It's coming up a little bit from room temperature. Looks like we've got a liter of water at a temperature of about 23 Celsius. You can actually see that on that scale there. We could try to measure it with the infrared thermometer and see what we get. This is 76 Fahrenheit. And we can measure it with the thermocouple. Let's see what it says. 77 Fahrenheit. So I'm just going to close the lid and while you watch we're going to boil water. You can go make coffee. This will take a few minutes. We want to figure out how long it's going to take for that liter of water to reach the boiling point.
getting close, I'm sure. Let's take a look at the temperature in there now. A bit of steam coming off the top. Let's get the monitor down in here. Let me get a temperature. Let the water above the coil on the inside measures about 90, 93. Celsius right now, so it's almost ready to boil. And there it is, it's beginning to boil inside right now. You can see this on there, and then there's an automatic cutoff, which is uh, developed by the heat, causes a switch to turn off over there in a moment. boiling water inside now and our thermometer comes up just shy of a hundred at 90 looks like right at 99 Celsius so you can see down inside the pot there's a heating coil in the base of the pot and it's just a resistive coil so that once you've had a little bit of electrical theory you'll realize that all that does is take the flow of electrons which is electrical current and they deliver energy to that coil which then heats the water and the input to that coil comes through the bottom there's a connector right here very clever connector which goes into that base and then a switch, which is hidden up inside, which turns it on and off. And then the switch has a thermal cutoff when the water boils so that it won't stay on too long. Inside the base, let me just unplug it here from our power. That's where the connection is made. And then on the bottom, this is the important part, uh, it says 120 volts AC, 60 hertz. 1500 watts. So this heater is delivering 1500 watts of power to that water and it's that power that heated up that water to boiling in whatever time it is we, we measured. So just to summarize what we've done, we first we took a piece of brass and we added mechanical energy to it we measured how much the temperature increased. And then we, um, we did some experiments with water. We mixed water at different temperatures and looked at the temperature that they ended up at. We took that same piece of brass and we heated it up and we put it in the water and watched it transfer its energy to the water. We boiled water and seen how electrical energy raises the temperature of water. We've melted ice. Watch how the energy in the water goes into the ice to change it back to water again. So all of these things are just simple examples of uh, the use of specific heat and the measurement of temperature in, uh, in very practical sort of applications. We measure temperature in three different ways. The one that worked best was this thermocouple, which I'm sitting here now measuring in Celsius says the temperature at the end of this probe is 23.3 Celsius. We could also measure with a mercury thermometer, which measures the expansion of a mercury column on a graduated scale inside this sealed glass cylinder. Or we could measure the black body radiation, which is emitted by all warm objects, and it says the temperature of the scale is 73.5, or I could point it at almost anything here in the room and get the temperature of that object. It won't vary very much unless I get the back of a computer or something like that. So I think you have everything you need now to analyze the data and learn something about specific heats.